Kazant Ariande is a sport and exercise scientist turned online business management consultant. Her expertise comes from working in the fitness, health, wellness, and coaching industries for more than a decade, collaborating with five to seven figure entrepreneurs who are thriving in their niches. Zanz has multiple businesses. She has been a full time digital nomad for the past six years and is currently traveling between Mexico and the US with her two dogs. Hello, everybody. I'm so happy to have here with me today for another episode of the Money Matters podcast, Zanz Ariance. Hey, Zanz, how are you? Hey, Anka, I'm doing great. How are you? I'm great. I was visualizing your name <laughs> to make sure that I'm pronouncing it correctly. <laughs> you nailed it. So well done. <laughs> okay, so I'm really curious, Anz, to hear about your story and how you're a digital nomad. You've been a digital nomad for the last six to seven years. And I think that that's something that a lot of people would be interested in embracing. So let's start a little bit with your background story. How did it all start for you and what are you doing now? Amazing. All right. So I'm a sports and exercise scientist. I absolutely love the health and wellness world. And I always thought I'll end up in that that industry. But as time progressed in my earlier career, I realized that this is a male dominant world. It's really tough to make it unless if you literally be someone's assistant. And from the get go, I was like, I don't want to work for anyone. I want to be my own boss. I want to set my own terms. And I ended up starting a fitness business about 13 years ago. And it was strong from the get-go, really working in it. I enjoyed it. It gave me the flexibility. And then we all went through a bit of a recession dip. And I was like, oh, wow, this is this is the reality of being a business owner. Um, I ended up going back into corporate, hated it. I dreaded every morning having to do a traditional nine to five. And then just about seven years ago, I was like, I'm done. I'm cashing out whatever savings I have. We're doing this. We're going to start this whole digital nomad experience. See how easy and not so easy it is to travel the world, work full time. And just like have that independence and flexibility we all want in our um, work environment. Mm. So yeah, that's pretty much where it all started and grew from. Yeah, and I love what you mentioned because I think that this is a really important piece about the fact that you actually did put some money on the side before jumping in because that's always a great idea. (laughs) One of the hardest things to do is I might, I have my own responsibility to pay rent and my bills and everything else in between. And that's also main, one of the main stress factors when you open your own business. Like I know what I want to do, but where's the money going to come from? Hmm. Yeah, 100%. And I think I'm, I'm saying this because I hear this story from so many people and like, I just want to quit. I just want to quit. And so many friends, you know, they call in and like, I'm quitting. I'm quitting. I'm quitting. And I'm like, do you have enough money for like, you know, five to six months to live off your savings? So yeah. if that's your story. Here's Anne's story. She saved a little bit and then she was able to quit the soul sucking corporate job and go full in digital nomad. <laughs> no, definitely. And I mean, there's no amount that would be enough because I was dragging my free to feet and procrastinating because I pretty much cast, cashed out all my insurance benefits, everything else. I'm like, I'm taking my pension. I'm going to live it up for a year, figure out what I want to do. And then the first couple of months, I was like, oh, I still have time. I still have a couple of months covered. Let's just ease into it. And that's also a pitfall. I mean, you also get to a point where you're not catching that momentum and there's no sense of urgency. So I would definitely say less months help for me to kind of get going. But um, three to six months was enough to start my journey and kind of just focus and tunnel vision it all the way to the end. Yeah, and I guess that this is also about like different people working in different ways, right? Because I can relate to that and that we are the people who kind of 
feel the burn and then we get moving and then we create something really quickly but then again there are people who are very steady and maybe it's a this difference in personality also shows how much you are aligned with a certain type of professional lifestyle or professional style um what i wanted to i wanted to pick your brains on to is that moment so you procrastinated how would you have liked to do things differently did you have a structure or like a plan and then you kind of put it on hold the time that you are taking your time to procrastinate <laughs> it was literally waiting for the moment for everything to be perfect to launch it was like I was waiting to have the perfect systems and my website had to be perfect and everything just had to flow before doing it and I was putting so much pressure on getting it ready that I was wasting time months money on not just catching momentum so my biggest thing if I could go back I was like just just get going get that first client kind of figure out what you want to do and offer and the rest will fall in place I even now in my business I'm like oh this system doesn't really work we have another client onboarding or maybe it's a new offer that we just put out instead of spending months on trying to really perfect that flow we're like let's trial and error it. let's literally stick some throw something to the wall and see what sticks and it's not always uh from someone that's been in corporate for a couple of years um it's not always a easy mindset shift for us because we really expect everything to work and flow and we're scared of the speed bumps that we're going to hit along the way or the dead ends <laughs> um so yeah for if i could redo it i would stop overthinking it that's the downside of it yeah and when when you mentioned what you mentioned about having the perfect system like this is me right <laughs> lead magnet has been ready for i don't know how many months the funnel is ready and i'm like I'm just waiting for the divine moment when I'm going to be able to pay for the ads. And the truth is, and thank you for speaking to that, I think that a lot of entrepreneurs will resonate with it, that there is no perfect moment and that you will never know whether it works or not, whatever you created, your funnel, your perfect ad, your book, but you will get feedback. And then based on that feedback, you will be able to readjust and to create something that is more aligned with your avatar, with your ideal client. And as you said, start imperfectly sooner than later and use that all that feedback to actually refine, refine, refine up the more to the moment where you feel that you have a really great offer and then you are able to expand more and maybe like do ads a little bit more intensively, more aggressively. And especially if you start your business, we have an idea of what we want to offer. But realistically, I can say from personal experience, what I built my business on from the get-go many years ago, none of that exists anymore. I have progressed, pivoted, grown into a different industry, offered other things. Essentially, I want to do website design and management. I did it for a good two clients. And I was like, oh, no, this is not what I want to do. And if you kind of just keep progressing and that's also another thing that I find a lot of entrepreneurs when they start they scared to change direction they scared to go with the flow and kind of figure out their flow um and that's the hardest part for me essentially was to but I built my business and structured it to do x y and z I'm not doing x y and z so now I have to wait a couple of more months before we moved into something else and just as soon as I let myself go and just kind of flow into what I felt was really aligned and what I felt a connection with and my passion with, it just all clicked. It was like, that was the moment like, oh, okay, let's take a step back. Let's kind of debunk the overthinking. Let's put it back in the pile and in the box and let's just flow with business because that's what entrepreneurship is. It's never going to be from point A to point B because there's going to be detours along the way back to the start, reinvent, revamp, everything along. Yeah, I love that. You you know that zigzaggy thing? The first time that I saw it, no, like, oh my God, I thought that it was only me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that that speaks also to your ability to adapt and to actually learn from your clients and not be set on, on things. And I, I think that this is something that somehow it's a myth in the entrepreneur in the entrepreneurial sphere or just 
like business wise, right? Everybody imagines that you're going to put your offer there and people are going to be like, 100%, this is exactly what I wanted. And actually, you realize that what you put out there is not truly what people want. And then you kind of learn how to, okay, it's not exactly that, but is there a little aspect that could be used to pivot and to actually create an offer that is more um, pertinent, appropriate for, for my clients? And this is what you did. Exactly. I mean, we want this flexible lifestyle, so we got to be flexible with it. I mean, the perfection and the progress is in the flexibility. And I, this is something I always speak to my mentees. I'm like, you got to go with the flow. How, be flexible. If something doesn't work, it's not the end of the world. Doesn't mean you need to stop. It's like, take a step back, maybe reapproach it, have a bit of flexibility with it, <clears throat> excuse me, and then just go from there. Like that is, it's literally a word that's stuck onto my wall. It's like, be flexible. <laughs> I'm curious. So as you were mentioning things, I'm curious how um, how did this idea of freedom and working as a digital nomad, how did it come for you was it something that maybe you saw in your childhood and you saw something and you're like oh god I would like to see the world or is it something that came with COVID and being stuck <laughs> oh god <laughs> let's not go there <laughs> definitely something that came from childhood um, I grew up in a household that it was my way or the highway from my parents' point of view. And you were literally put in a box and you weren't allowed to go outside of that box. And it was just like a straight, narrow end. And it was not fulfilling. I always had that empty feeling or that kind of sense of desire in me that I want more. This can't be life having to be like, go study law go to medicine, uh, uh, go study medicine or go, you have to go to university, you have to do this, you have to be a top student at school. And even the, those things, we do it so we keep our parents happy. I was not happy. And it was really the hardest part, leaving home, kind of going into my own direction and having that sense of responsibility that I can be anything I want to be but it's still my responsibility to become that. It's like kind of having that connection, not your parents telling you, oh, you need to do X, Y, and Z, um, but with the freedom knowing that, oh, I still have responsibility of doing X, Y, and Z. The only difference is I get to do it my way now. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that kind of happened. I think that was the sense of with me starting my fitness business, it was like, I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to prove you that I can build a business at the age of 20 um, that can be successful. I can really take care of myself without needing someone to tell me, oh, you're never going to be successful because I study sports sciences. I mean, what is that? You, you're going to work in a lab or work in a school and not make money and everything to that extent. And that kind of allowed me to grow into an entrepreneur to say, you know what, I don't want to be put in a box. I don't want to have the traditional lifestyle of a nine to five. I want to have flexibility. And flexibility has always been that one word that stuck by me. I'm like, if I create anything, um, if we change spots or places, or if I take on more work, or if I add additional, I'm like, what is my level of flexibility? And not just within the business, but also within self. If I want to take a day for myself or hang out with my dogs or, you know, do anything, what is that sense of flexibility? And that is, that is something I never had as a child. And I think that's kind of how it's been drawing through over the past 20 years. Mm. Yeah, I love it. And it's also really powerful how you used your original story to oppose what you have been gifted as a plan in life and to decide, actually, this is not really something that, that suits me. And it's interesting because I, I see it in a lot of people who go very different on a different path than 
well, I don't know if it's the majority anymore because I know now it feels that a lot of people are kind of embracing this lifestyle. Yeah. But it's just that moment of, no, I'm going to choose me and my dreams. And yes, that's going to create a, a, a rupture with everything that I was prepared and sold on, you know, because I grew up with this idea of you go to school, you do good. And I did all these things. And then I went on the job market and I was like, I'm a failure. <laughs> am i supposed to like make not even like in romania you know when you start working it was like 200 dollars per month i don't even remember like when i finished university now like are you kidding me like this is not the life i mean like i i slaved in that school i finished first university second after my uh, best friend and you are telling me that i'm supposed to be happy with 200 dollars per month it's like what did that a or prestigious award brought you in life because now you're done and you're still at the bottom of the barrel with everyone else mm-hmm. and uh it, that is also something that really hit me hard is growing up in a wealthy environment and not understanding how do I get there and I don't care what someone says and they can judge me for it but I feel our parents had it a bit easier you were guaranteed having a good job and making bank when you went to university, it was kind of putting you in a different class. Nowadays, it's not. I have friends that got great degrees and everything to that extent that was supposed to make their money and they really struggling to make ends meet. They're really struggling to cover, cover basic overheads. And I'm just like, where are we having this disconnect where someone that was struggling to finish high school is a multimillionaire why aren't we being taught to utilize our mind and not just being like, oh, book smart, get this? You know, it's not the flow of how things work anymore. Mm-hmm. And I see it a lot with people that come to me and we're like, oh, I want to do what you do. And I'm like, why? Tell me a bit of your background. Everyone's like, oh, my dad wanted me to study X, Y, and Z. My mom wanted this. And I was like, okay, but what do you want? She's like, this is what I want. At- In my 30s, I want to change the whole environment. I want to cash out. I want to travel the world. I don't want to be married, have kids, and kind of just be a yes, ma'am. I want to live my life. And this is the progress. And also, very sadly, the after effect we have from our generation being stuck in a corporate job for 10 to 20 years that we didn't like, but we did it to please other people. And now we have to start from the bottom again. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's I mean that's a real struggle for everyone. I think a lot of people can relate to that. Yeah, and as you are as you are talking about this, I I remember I had a conversation with a friend, and see, I was never sold on that dream. Um, I was brought up with the idea I was sold on on something else. I was brought up with the idea that I am the best, the most intelligent, and that I can do everything I want. And then I went to the real world. <laughs> And I was like, hmm, I don't seem to be the best, the most intelligent, the most beautiful in the world, right? So that was a big, <laughs> wow, okay, <laughs> aha moment. And then I had this conversation with a friend who did, she enjoyed, I, I don't know if she purely enjoyed it, but she did climb the corporate ladder and she got to a certain point and she's happy with the amount of money that she's making. But of course, a lot of sacrifice in terms of freedom, time, energy, being around people that maybe she doesn't fully respect and so on. And this is something that I found in our discussion that certain people, and I think primarily women, maybe on the back of feminism and on the back of the oppression for so many, so many years, bought into the idea of, oh, I'm going to invest in my career and that's going to bring me fulfillment, right? And I think that for certain women, that's 100% true. But for many of us, um, I did, I wasn't really there, but you start understanding in your 30s and 40s that, oh, this was actually a big fat lie for me to become another person who is just slaving for other people's dreams. And it's a really... I mean, I, I completely agree because... We are very, women are very success driven. We want to prove a point, especially going through the years and the recent years of, you know, gender being who's more capable of doing something. And I know, I mean, any male boss I've ever worked for, I would ask them, like, why did you employ a woman in this position? And their, like, true honest response was they get it done. They know how to do it. They are loyal. They're hardworking. 
and they don't need to, you know, you don't you don't need to push them and follow up and everything to that extent or spoon feed them. This is this is what I see with all my friends that kind of climb the corporate ladder and they're sitting in boardrooms filled with men and they are still the star of the show and everyone comes to them. And I think we're very success driven. But it does come at a major sacrifice because our maternal instinct is to take care of everyone else around us except ourselves. It comes down and it's the same in business, same in home life, same in family life, same in any aspect. Even in our socials, I mean, like we tend to take care more of our friends than we sometimes reciprocate it. And it just comes to that point where that is the pivot of burnout. That's not because the job is burning out, is we literally giving everything we have and not having that sense of flexibility to give something back to ourselves is what makes women to take this turn point to jump into being a independent business owner, entrepreneur, or going their own direction at our age. Hmm. Yeah. And as you were talking about this, um, I remember we worked together on this book, right? So you supported me in creating this book and we came up with different workouts for different menstrual cycle. And this is kind of the translation in the business or in the, I don't even know if only in the corporate world where it's not really built for women to thrive, even if we are sacrificing so much. And I think that the part is, yeah, the, the maternal instinct and just See, like feeling that we always have to prove ourselves. But I think that the other aspect is the conditioning of uh, everybody else's needs, what you mentioned, are more important. And you really need to make sure that you are getting, that you are giving your best. And there is no space for anybody to comment that had you been a man, you would have done a better job. Yeah. No, definitely. And I also think that. This is where the flexibility comes into play for me, which is really important because as I go through my own cycle, I notice that there are some weeks in the month where my energy is low or my focus is super low and then add some ADHD in the mix and it's all over the place. Um, And this is where I see where a certain week of the month, it's still like, okay, I need to have an easy load of work less creativity, more X, Y, and Z straightforward things because that allows me to perform at my best without taking a whole dip into business. And I know when I worked corporate, it was like every day the same thing, every day the same expectation. And there's no support in terms of our own cycle and our own mental well-being and our own health when it comes to delivering these tasks and these um, outlays and everything else that comes in between it. Yeah. What is your first money memory? Do you remember? The first one is I signed my biggest client. I was always playing it small. And that's that's another thing as we tend to play it small and safe when we start being an entrepreneur. And I was like at a point, okay, I'm safe. I cover bills. I have a good flow. Let's go out and find my ideal client. Let's see if it works. And in less than a week, I land this five-figure client. I'm like, now for someone that's from South Africa, that's a lot of money. <laughs> it's just compared to the US dollars, I mean, for uh, in the entrepreneur world, comparing it, it's not really fair. But I was like, okay, wait. And I just felt so proud when that PayPal came through. I took a screenshot. I'm like, this is my fi- first five figure client. It's not just a whole month's hard work put into all condensed. It's one client. It's a small part of my entire business. And that was like the I made it. Mm. I'm good. Did it. I remember at my my partner at the time he was at work. I took a screenshot and I sent it to him. And he's like, what's this for? And he's like, worried, like what's happening and everything. I'm like, I signed a client. And he was just like shocked. He's like how what's happened I t- he's like kind of want to be proud and well he was proud and like congratulate me on the mind he's like 
how did, was that a mistake that maybe add an extra zero like is this correct and kind of just in disbelief and that was just like I felt proud because he was proud of me as well because I mean he never grew up in a environment where you understand people being business owners and also for me being the breadwinner in the house and earning more money I mean it does dapple a bit into the ego and he was just shocked at what I can do while staying at home sitting in comfy gym clothes playing with the dogs half the day and I'm making that money and I was just like that was my aha moment and I'm so even to this day I'm so proud of it it's a favorite photo on my camera roll and I'm just like whenever I feel a bit done I'm like remember that Mm-hmm. yeah that's so powerful you have like that expensive moment expensive not expensive <laughs> sometimes my english is not is not conveying the right message but then you you have like a precedent and then you know whenever it's like you have the mo- the, the moments of disbelief or doubt you are like no i actually have proof um that i was able to do it do you have a, m- a memory before that like maybe something from your childhood or your early years like the first time that you realized that there is such a thing as money i think it was a little a lot more negative because my childhood environment was you were revo- rewarded with money if you had a good report from school you would get money for the holidays if you did not you won't you know there was no like anything that was related oh i forgot your birthday we two months late he has a he has a check of ten thousand rand um go that would like that was the type of love so there was always a negative mindset around money because it was a way to buy love and that's also something I had to realize growing up and also in my own relationships with friends and family that I can't have that connection and that's that's the that's a earliest sense of money I mean I grew up in a wealthy household um there was never not enough money to do something but money was a big talk and a big elephant in the room because everything revolved around it it was also everything success related was about money and that was I think maybe why I was so resistant of chasing down the big leads and really making bank in my business because I was like I don't want that to be the only sense of success. And I mean, that's a hard part. That was like <laughs> the biggest thing about money growing up where I'm like, okay, it does, it's important. And I also realized as soon as I left the home and kind of tied, uh, snipped the bonds and kind of went my own way, I struggled. I was poor for the first time. I had to run three jobs and be a full-time student just to be able to pay the rent. I still had to figure out along the way how to pay car insurance and food and still, you know, go to class and wiggle a schedule. And I think that was like, that was my sense of money in the earlier years. And I kind of just always put it down at the bottom of the barrel of importance um, with a bit more of a negative tone than as I grew up and went into my business where it became more of a positive um, impact, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really interesting story. I wonder if it's not somehow very relatable for probably most everybody, because there is always this flavor of negativity around money. Like we grew up maybe. So my first memory of money (laughs) is that I would have been maybe four or I was five, I know I was very young, okay? Because I, I think that I could barely count to 10. So they gave me money to go and buy something from the shop. I was living at the countryside with my grandparents. So of course they gave me exa- the exact amount, right? Because, you know, 90s Romania. Yeah. <laughs> I, would, I would have probably been cheated. <laughs> so I remember that I was walking down the street with this like amount of, of pay- we had paper money back then, now we have plastic money. So I was like trying to count them or pretending to count them and looking around if people can notice how important I am with like money and counting them. I- <laughs> so it's funny right this is one of the memories it's funny but I think that it translates so much of the relationship that I that I had with money and that I, I I took from my family around money and what you also mentioned how somehow and even now I'm struggling a lot with that like my worthiness 
is linked to the amount of money that I'm making and to the amount of money that I'm receiving for what I'm offering as a service, you know? Yeah. We we put money on a pedestal. Yeah. It's such a small fraction of what we do as entrepreneurs, but we still put it on a pedestal. We still use it as a sense of what to compare and what to have, um, what to acknowledge as success. And that's also something that's really, I mean, we all need to eat. We all need a roof over our heads. I mean, as a shopaholic, I, I like myself some Amazon and HC spending. <laughs> but we also need to understand that that's just a small part of it and that our relationship with it will affect everything else. Um, just acknowledging that money is not what makes our world go around when it comes to being a female entrepreneur. There's a lot of other senses that plays a big role in it. Mm. I'm curious about the other things. I just wanted to mention something. So I feel that a lot, like I think probably most everybody, apart from the people who are really off the grid and off the system and who live somewhere, I don't know, on a mountain, we've been seduced by the idea of money. And I think that this is something really interesting to decorticate because when you are coming from this space of being seduced and somehow um, mesmerized by the concept of money and not the actuality of money, it became became so much more charged. And I can see it because people who are not really making money like myself and people who are making billions or millions, for them money just is. There is, they are not yeah. used, they understand what it is. It's a means to get stuff. And when you have it, yeah. it's so much easier to live life and it's great. But the the idea of the mesmer, being mesmerized is gone from their consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. I think we, because we put money on a pedestal, we continuously approach it with a scarcity mindset. Oh, I don't have enough money. Oh, I need to make more money. Oh, instead of just having your money flow, instead of just having that alignment, you know what? We good. How can we utilize our energies in other areas to still make our money work for us? Um, and that's I think that's the hardest part as being a VA and in this industry is we sell hours for money. So essentially, the more hours we work, the more money we will get. So what do we do? We end up chasing chasing 16-hour days, seven days a week, neglecting everything else, burning ourselves out just to get that perfect dollar amount that we want to have every month. And I think that's also approach of thinking money, uh, approaching money as from a mindset of scarcity. And once I took a step back and I really analyzed of what it means to me for being a business owner, because I can be successful in the corporate world. I can convince because now I work 16 hours a day. Yes, I have my own business, but wouldn't it be easy just for once to not worry about where my paycheck comes, whether a client pays on time, whether I'm going to have a bonus at the end of the year? Because when I'm in a corporate job, that sense of security of they're going to pay me, I'm going to be fine, I just need to be present from nine to five or whatever the flow might be. It's like sometimes I still have this internal debate when things get tough or client pays late or we have a couple of free hours that, oh, maybe that would just be easier because I want to take a week of leave. It's not easy being going on a week of leave as a business owner because you still need to uphold it. Um, but also comes down to how you set up your business. But as being in a corporate or working for someone and having an employer, that would be easy. I fill out my leave or vacation request and be like, done. Not my problem for two weeks. You figure it out. And that's not the same. So there's a lot of things that sometimes pop up for me. But then I also realized that I don't have to sit in traffic all day to get to work. I don't have to be in the same country every six months. I can do whatever I want. If I feel like taking the afternoon off, I mean, I can set it up that way to still have it and not be able to exchange a leave day for it. It also just comes from how you set up your business because I was in such a corporate mind frame that I kept chasing to have my business the same as a corporate business. 
Uh, you got to make big money. You got to have full time staff. You got to be available during office hours, permanently, always sitting ready to be a yes, ma'am. And that didn't work for me. And it's kind of the biggest transition that I went through this year in my business is realigning it to what does Zans want? Hmm. Do I want to be able to go to the gym at 11 a.m. in the morning? Do I want to be able to just be like, I'm tapped out for the day. I have a migraine. Let's just take a step back. You know, if I need to go register something at the department in the city, it's not like, oh, I need to plan this and make sure I have a whole day. If I want to book a trip, it's like, okay, I don't need to put a day's leave in. I'd be like, hey, clients, I'm going to be offline for four hours. going to be somewhere in the air. I'll let you know when it, whenever I arrive. You know, having that sense of flexibility. So that was the important aspect for me apart from putting money aside, having that sense of flexibility and also being able to put back into myself because for the last 10 or 15 years, I've always given to everyone around me. I've always made sure um, everyone else was fine and put my needs behind me. Now it can kind of transition like, what do I want? Is this something that I can say, fuck yes, this is for that. Or do I have to be like, okay, what will this person think? Would that be person be fine? Like kind of just changing that mindset because why did I start a business? I don't want to answer to anyone. So why I'm not answering my own needs. And that kind of just dribbled down into the type of entrepreneur and building a business that I wanted. Mm, and I love that. And I, I can already feel for you like the billions and trillions <laughs> coming towards you. Because I think that this is the energy, you know what I mean? Like I so despised, I worked in agencies and we had to work like with all sorts of clients and we despised all of them. We despised them, but we had to work with them because we were like a, an agency and they were paying salaries and so on. So yeah. We, yeah. I know, like one of my first corporate experiences was working in a call center. I mean, that humbled the shit out of me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have the skills and you kind of learn how to work with clients, but I take my hat off for anyone that works in a call center because that's a tough job. 100. You know. <laughs> yes. I haven't. I have never. I have never. But honestly, I realize that that is just something that I cannot do personally. Like I'm not cut for that, <laughs> but I have so much respect for people who can, because just dealing with two in the one individual, you know, who's like pissed off and like, Hey, what do you want or whatever? And it's downhill from there. <laughs> yeah. It was like kind of just messes up your entire day, but that also kind of builds a bit of resilience and also understanding having that connection that I'm just the person on the other side of the phone that's not my fault but it's how they relay their frustration and also understanding it from a consumer point of view and that is kind of where I brought that negative experience into my business understanding what my clients will need and really clarifying the client journey is helping me today to kind of build a good flow and solving their problems because that's the main thing why they come to me instead of just being what do you want to do what do you want me to help you with? How can I help? You know, like kind of, like, let's do X, Y, and Z. Let's get this done because that will be the result your your own clients will experience at the end of the day. Mm, yeah. Okay. So we kind of uh, spoke about a lot of things, but we haven't addressed how do you actually support people on their journey? What are the services? How does it work? My personal client journey starts kind of with, they come to me, I do business consultants. So they come with me, they either have hit a dead end or a speed bump in their business and they don't know how to pivot it into the next level or next phase, or they just have the idea and they kind of just want to know how do we put it in flow. So a lot of my clients come to me for business consulting. We go through the flow, we kind of understand what they need. And then it's the execution part. Like, all right, we know what we want to do and what are the steps that need to be taken, but I still don't know how to build a social media strategy or get a website or build an email marketing sequence or funnel. So how do I do it? And that's where my agency comes in is we have a team of experts in all the areas of a traditional startup virtual business. And we just kind of plug it all in. So it connects. 
and then we just go through it. So most of my clients are in the fitness, health, wellness, or coaching industry. It's an industry that we specialize in. I love it. I thrive in it. I love the fact that it can be so broad and so specific and how amazing we can utilize health, spirituality, fitness, wellness, and the whole coaching sense of it into various areas. Something as I have a client that does yoga for migraine. I have a client that literally just does stress coaching. It like just goes so broad, but so specific. And that's that's the area. So basically, that's how we work with our clients. They come in through the consultancy. We kind of analyze where their business needs are. And then we go and execute it through the agency. We figure it out. We do a flow. And then we go, we have clients that just come through a 90-day progress. We start from the start, go through, set it all up, and then they DIY it. And as they kind of pivot into the next direction or want to add a product, they come back to us. We set it up. We go with the flow. And then we have clients that are on consistent retainers. We just manage the entire business. We do everything from client support, email marketing, social media, website, course development, anything else that's in between. And then we just go with it. Mm, Yeah, I love that. And as somebody who worked with you, I really appreciated your level of integrity and just the clarity. It was very clear in terms of expectation. And um, what I felt was, was also this openness and this willingness to really create the best outcome without having that, you know, like, some some people uh, are really people pleasing and however you want it and so on but it was not the case like you had a very strong professional input and explaining things it was really a, a very powerful yeah a powerful experience I appreciate it. I think also with this industry, it's so competitive. So if you don't really niche down into what problems you want to solve for your clients, it's not gonna work. You are really going to compete, especially in the fitness side with influencers that maybe lost a couple of pounds and now they're expert, regardless to the people that has multiple certifications or degrees that's just struggling to make ends meet. Um, it's really very, it comes down to analyzing what type of client you want to work with and really hitting that soft spot for us. And I think that's something that in your business as well, really being very specific of who you want to help and how you want to help them is what puts you apart from everyone else in your field. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned a little bit, or we focused because that's that's what I love talk, talking about discrepancies between men and women. I'm working hard, you know, like I'm listening to male advocates speaking about how difficult it is for men because I know that I have to like break it inside <laughs> this tendency to bash men. But in regards to money, what do you feel? And is it true that that women have um have more difficulties in asking for money or creating money and do you how how would you feel that they could move past that right you work with a lot of entrepreneurs with a lot of women entrepreneurs I think it's just the sense of reprogramming our brains that we are all equal we are all capable of doing the same thing regardless of our gender we have all we are all intelligent we have all got the needs and the assets to perform a task I think at the end of the day and I mean it it might be old school mentality that you know our parents kind of I mean we I didn't grow up but I know my parents grew up in a household where the male was the breadwinner the female was stay-at-home mom and kind of build it up we're not in that era anymore we are 30 40 50 years later on things have shifted things have changed and just being a bit open-minded about it I think it's the first step um personally with my whole experience I was something my partner really struggled with initially and it was it was always that awkward point in our relationship where he couldn't be the provider I'm like it doesn't really come down to you not being a provider these different areas and for them struggling I think just coming to the realization that Women are capable of moving mountains. Like, let's just be honest and just be open. And like, if you need to be a bit feminist, just do it. Because just understanding that what we bring to the table will also, at the end of the day, improve their own 
lives and money and everything to that extent. So I think just clarifying that we are all equal and not really basing it on gender. Um, I think that's also the hardest part of acknowledging experience and qualification that if I got a degree at university as a sports scientist, I'm just as capable as the man that got it in my class. It doesn't put him above me. I mean, I can guarantee you my marks were probably double his. Uh, um, and that was my struggle initially with this whole industry as a fitness um, or, or having a fitness business is I had my peers in class that literally just scraped through. And yeah, I was a cum laude student. And they were making more money than me. Like, what is the difference here? And I just understood it from that perspective. So just like debunking the whole mindset of men can do it better, women can do it better. And let's look at the end product or the end result. What is going to be the best way for us getting there? And just equalizing the playing field. I think it's it really comes down to cleaning up top level management and as we see more females stepping into these positions they are empowering um other females to climb the corporate ladder and also just stepping out of our own mindsets of oh my dad has got his own business i won't be able to be successful so let's go work for him instead of really taking that experience because as soon as we kind of just turn their idea and their understanding of it they'll be supportive i think education at the end of the day plays a big role yeah. <laughs> proof is in the pudding <laughs> what is your biggest life dream at this moment oh Goodness, I have achieved so much in the past seven months that was on my bucket list. I'm currently in, it actually makes me so emotional. Um, I'm currently in Austin, Texas, which has been a dream since I was eight years old. And you know, when we started working together, that was always the end goal. And it's something that I never thought would be would be possible. Um, anyone that knows or goes through immigration that coming to the U.S., If you don't get sponsored into a corporate job or have big bucks, it's nearly impossible. And I never thought being a business owner, I'll be able to pave my own way to get here. And um, it was such a big moment for me to immigrate from the from South Africa at the beginning of the year to, you know, kind of buy a car that was. I've never bought a car cash and literally this was the first time in my life I was able to buy a car cash and just going through it, being able to jump in the car with my two hooligans and just drive wherever we want. So I am currently living the dream. I think the, the next big thing would be um, we're busy working on a new business venture essentially to incorporate and allowing kind of building a community and giving that foundation for other prospect or female entrepreneurs that kind of want to step into this world and um, I think that's the biggest dream currently is just creating a community and platform and a support system for other females that want to jump and dive into what I'm currently doing wow and I love that I'm so happy for you and I so celebrate you I'm like yes Austin Texas <laughs> yes and I also love the fact that see like I feel that this is where you see a woman's drive you know like I want community. I want to empower other women. I want to help other people also. I kind of made it. I reached whatever I wanted and I'm going to grow, but also I want to bring other people along the journey. So yeah, that's really beautiful. That slight maternal instinct, like I want to give back, but I'm giving back very selectively. I'm really picking at only females, you know, only if you want to do this and that. I like, I'm really... I want to give back and I really want to empower and fill. I think the hardest part for me at the moment is not having that community. And I think that's the hardest part as well as being a entrepreneur, especially in the virtual space is you by yourself 99% of the time. I literally, I have Jade who works for me and 
I would schedule meetings with her to discuss client stuff and we will just talk life stuff for an hour and a half. And I'm like, she's like, okay, let's talk about clients. I'm like, no, we're done. That's all I wanted to discuss. Like just have a bit of a friendship environment type of thing. And I think that is the biggest disconnect for me currently. And that's what we are putting back into the community. Building a safe environment, a space where fellow female digital nomads can come together we can do stuff together, go on trips together, build businesses together, network our little hearts out without le- any limitations or out without, you know, having a sense of, oh, I don't know how to do this. I don't have someone to go to. Like kind of being a bit of a big sister role, but in a fun way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I love that you mentioned before, right? Like the struggle of... um being somebody who is neurodivergent and being an entrepreneur but there is also this aspect of health and wellness and feeling alienated in so many ways um, because maybe many of your friends are not on a similar path to you so there is no real resonance for them to understand what you are struggling with so yeah having this sense of community is so important and then also I, I feel that women grow through this you know like we grow by feeding each other maybe also men I, <laughs> I don't know like community is a, a really important thing for for everybody so yeah I love that I know one of my mentors he used to say that you are the average of the people you surround yourself with. But also, if you don't have a community, you're not going to climb life's tree. And that was so important to me. I'm like, I always try and surround myself with empower uh, females that empower me. But I also want to have a sense of community, you know, want to have that BFF in the work environment to be like, oh, I have this new idea or I need to do X, Y, and Z for a client. How would you approach it? And I mean, like Facebook groups are great. It's like we just post COVID. We don't really want to have that sense of online with everything anymore. We want to have that in-person interaction. And I think that also plays because I know as soon as I've had a few coffee dates with um, fellow entrepreneurs, especially now here in Austin, and we just get to chat about businesses and she's maybe just starting a business or she has already achieved something that I want to achieve in my business. It just like empowers me to go back and like, all right, let's get to work instead of draining my soul where I just want to sit on the couch with my dogs and what suits or something on Netflix. <laughs> Harvey, yes. <laughs> Harvey Specter, I know they don't make men like that anymore. Not even in movies, they don't make men like that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. What are some practical advice uh, around money or money making, managing finance uh, that you would like to offer to the audience? Um, I my biggest thing is figure out what you need to make and add about thirty percent to it, because life always has its surprises. So have your plan. Be also very open to it and understanding and respectful because as soon as something I fell into a pitfall, as soon as I started making money, a lot was going out into different directions instead of pouring it back into my business and growing. And then you kind of have the growth pause waiting for money and then growth pause waiting for money instead of have just a continuous flow. So budget, work out a plan. If, you, if you're not familiar with anything, have an accountant. There are so many exceptional women support fellow female entrepreneurs um, online that can help you with a baseline plan so that's the first thing with money is some planning not over planning just some planning to know that this is what I need to make in terms of growing a business because that will end up how you build your products or your services how you set up your business with clients and to know because that's also the second part is what do I charge what is my worth and Essentially, I know everyone's like, oh, I'm just a starter. I'm going to charge super low until I build my portfolio. I know I was one of them. I started by literally asking peanuts as I grow through. If I can redo it, I won't. I would put my sense of worth from the get go and then make sure I can deliver at the same rate. Um, and then community. I, I, it's one of the things that I always come back to. My money goals has always come down to who I have and support with me. 
Um, I saw the other day on Facebook that clients are more likely to become friends than friends becoming clients. Reality. Don't expect that someone in your family or immediate friend circle or whatever will support your business. Go out there, go swim in a space where, you know, it's completely new and network your little heart out because that is what's going to make you successful. Just be open to communicating, chatting and building a network outside of your family and friends. I have friends who be like, oh, great, how's business going? Like, oh, it's going, it's blooming. They're like, oh, great. That's the end of conversation. Like some of them don't even know what I do. I think my brother is even like, what do you do again? I'm like, I've been in this business for seven, almost eight years. You know, I he knows I work with other professionals in fitness, health, and wellness. Um, but he still doesn't know what I do to the point of I manage their business. He doesn't understand it, but he's also a very technical person. Um, he has always had a nine to five. So I mean, I get it, but just like disconnect that whole part of friends and family. They're not going to support you and be okay with it. Mm. be okay with it I, I use that as motivation I'm like okay who's going to be my network so with money and things like don't overthink it plan and make sure that what how you build your business at the end of the day feeds into that and then put back in um, don't get stuck in the money in money out kind of mindset um, which is which is a really tough one as an entrepreneur we want to be able to spend the money that we earn but we forget that we're still building a business Mm, yeah so zams why does money matter (laughs) a very simple answer is that if my dogs can live the most luxurious life ever but the most true answer to myself is it aligns with my sense of independence and flexibility. It aligns with the type of life I want to live and lead. Um, everything does revolve in my world around money in a more positive than a negative way. So it's not all about the dollar signs at the end of the day. It's how I can utilize it to empower the rest of my life. How can I put the money I earn back into myself, whether it's having a facial, being able to have a personal trainer, being able to take some time off for a weekend at a spa or retreat or whatever the sense might be. I mean, it does come down to money. So that's the part that matters to me. And also in a more traditional sense that I don't have anyone to ask for money if something goes belly up. (laughs) I am my own responsibility. There's not Apart from my brother, who's in New Zealand, I mean, it's going to take, if I'm in an emergency now and I have to call someone to bail me out, it's going to take him two weeks to get funds to me. So I don't have that responsibility or that sense of someone that can take care of me. And I think that is my sense of independence, why money matters. And being also very money savvy of not living dollar in, dollar out, dollar out. So having a rainy day fund, having a Zans fund, and also living in a sense of fluency with money and not a scarcity mindset. Mm, I love that having a Zans fund. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. Tell me. I really appreciate you having me. It was so lovely to chat with you today and just kind of connect on the sense of, from my other point of view, um, sharing a bit about what's going on in my world and how I can, you know, kind of hopefully someone out there use this message, seeing this as there. If you need a sign to get out of corporate or build or start your own business, this is it. 100%. I mean, I hope that people will, people all around will hear us. Though I think Amazon is going to be difficult to work with everybody there. Um, Where can we find you online? Um, So online, you can find me on Instagram. I'm not very active online, although I'm very active for my clients. Um, So Instagram is just at virtual a solutions. Um, Also, and my personal Instagram handle 
for business coaching is the Wellness OBM. Um, so you can find me there. They can visit my website, which is the same as my handles. And just reach out. You'll see on my website, there's a way to connect with me on WhatsApp, uh, connect with me on Facebook, slide into my DMs. I'm always happy to help wherever I can, whichever direction you're at, whether you want to start your business, you're looking for support, or just need someone to bounce some ideas off. Mm, amazing and everything is gonna be in the footnotes so you can find sans online thank you thank so you so much Anka. i <laughs> really appreciate it thank you and thank everybody for tuning in thanks for tuning in if you enjoyed the show the best way to support us is to subscribe and share and if you know anybody who would be a great fit to be featured on the show, please do reach out. Meanwhile, make your money matter.